is the Glass Cannon Network. Welcome back to Dustfall, scoundrels. I'm Jared Logan, and you are watching or listening to Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network. It's an actual play show where we play the game Blades in the Dark by John Harper, published by Evil Hat Studios. Buy yours at uh, well online or wherever fine RPG books are sold. Oh my gosh, this uh, this morning I'm having trouble articulating. <laughs> Am I possessed by a spirit? Uh, I say these things all the time, and they're not coming out of my mouth today. Uh, but here are three people who have no problem making things come out of their mouth. Uh, they're uh, <laughs> some of the best actors I know. Please welcome the cast of Haunted City, Josephine McAdam, Ross Bryant, and Abu Salim. What's up, guys? Yo. Hey, Ooh. hello. Have you ever had like brain farts or uh, I guess I, uh, mouth farts that every make it hard for you to? Yeah, yeah. are time. you kidding? Always, right? Daily occurrence. Yes. I think yeah, it happens all the time, every time, all the time. Now, happens, whenever my wife has on one, show. whenever my wife has one, I do make fun of her for it. So <laughs> it's really the lowest level of humor. She'll mm-hmm. be like, "It's Thursday," so, and I'll be like, "It's actually Friday." <laughs> you said Thursday. <laughs> You idiot. <laughs> and uh, it's real. It's real charming. It's real it's charming. Real. She it likes sounds, it when I do that. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, hopefully, you know, my tongue uh, kind of gets into gear here. You know, it's a totally different day from last time we recorded. So I'm just having a little trouble now, you know, kind of getting rolling this morning. Um, how about you guys? Not- you- Go ahead. At least you're not calling yourself baby this time. Which actually, I think that was off camera. But we had to <laughs> the immense, <laughs> immense joy of witnessing, listening to Jared refer to himself as baby. I just everyone has to suffer that. Listen, wow. I'm not going to refer to myself as baby anymore. Daddy promises you he won't no, do that. Oh my no. days! Oh Worse. my oh, god! If it's a choice between two horrible. <laughs> Can I say Baby one more thing? Prefer- yeah. Daddy promises to be a good little boy. No! no. What is wrong with you, man? <laughs> oh. You know, I, I, uh, Daddy is so repulsive, uh, especially referring to yourself in the third person as Daddy. I will say, I used to do stand-up in Chicago, and one of the gigs that you could get that paid was you could do stand-up for burlesque shows. So oh. I would do I would do stand up comedy at burlesque shows at theaters in Chicago, and there was one burlesque show where the catchphrase of the MC, who was not me, there was like a main master mm-hmm. of ceremonies. His catchphrase was "Daddy like." <gasps> oh mm-hmm. Jesus! So, so some Ooh. young woman would get up and do a, you know a very talented young woman would do a burlesque dance. It was really. Um, it's an art form. And then as uh, she or they got off stage, he would go, Daddy like. Yeah. Great. I mean, I'm yeah. sure that evolved well. I mean, uh, I'll be honest. It was kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Even in, in the establishment we were in. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I will say that... Uh, for today's episode, anytime you guys roll really well, I'm going to shout daddy like. Oh, fuck. That's, that sucks. <laughs> oh, right. Man, you are a cruel GM indeed. <laughs> I'm a brutal GM. And not Jared just so with the rules. Brutal. I'm brutal with my personality. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I just want to, like, a uh, word of warning. I'm, I'm watching a neighbor's uh, pup, 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 pup dog and... So if if a sort of canine sh- shadowy shape begins to loom behind me, uh, casting expressionistic shadows on the wall, <laughs> that's only because uh, there's a there's a tiny little dog po- poking around, right? And, and not right. because like there's werewolves. Anybody else have any warnings? Um, 
If you see anything crawling or making weird noises behind me, that is my daughter. Uh, <laughs> okay, great. There might a be a baby animal. that, um, I mean, um, Abu, your daughter doesn't yet have the ability to crawl, so we'll all be very concerned. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, which is why I'm I'm warning everyone in advance. If Syrah mm-hmm. floats in with glowing eyes and starts to speak in Latin, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll stop Let's, recording. Yeah, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> and uh, Josephine's dog is definitely going to bark while we're recording. It it happens. I mean, although maybe now that you've said it, perhaps perhaps not. You yeah. gotta bark at all the ghosts in here. Yeah, I mean, it's a haunted city. There are a lot of ghosts. Speaking of which, a thousand years ago, this was a land of beauty and magic. Mm. Then came the cataclysm that blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the lands of the dead. Mm. The city of Duskfall is a metropolis of tenements and factories surrounded by crackling lightning towers. Outside the city is a wasteland of the ravening undead. Inside the city is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. Life is cheap in a city ruled by death. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades in the dark. Love it. Love it. I think my tongue is working again. (coughs) My tongue is working. You know what? Part of that intro is hard is the only thing that shines... The only thing that shines, that part's tough for the me. Only thing that shines. Oh, the yeah. only thing that shines. The only thing that shines. The only thing, the only that, thing that, shines. that shines. Wow, we do sound like a cult right now. The only thing that shines. The, <laughs> the only thing that shines. shines. The only thing that shines. <laughs> now give your blood to the master. Okay. <laughs> Let me do a recap because we're in the middle of a score and we're going to oh, finish gosh. it up today. The remnant took a job from the foundation. They are architects and masters of the city's sacred geometry if you will they uh they are builders of a different sort than the builder we have met in some previous adventures they asked the remnant to go down into some tunnels beneath six towers and clear them out of the inhabitants there the inhabitants happen to be hollows living bodies that have had their soul ripped away from them turning them into shambling caricatures of life and so the remnant entered these tunnels They almost drowned in an airlock-type chamber. They took on a mob of hollows at one juncture and finally found their way into the old city, a literal city, a part of an old city that has been paved over, buried beneath the streets of modern Duskfall. When they arrived there, they very carefully and very adeptly set up a trap for the hollows wherein they got onto different buildings in the old city here, drew out the hollows with a a sort of a bait, and then shredded them with shrapnel bombs. But something went wrong. That always happens in scores like this. (laughs) One of their bombs shredded a very important support pylon on one of the buildings they were standing on, Juliette Belrose and Ecphelia are falling toward the pavement, the the cobblestones of the square below them, where a bunch of injured hollows crawl about, trying to uh, become erect again. But of course, their legs and arms have been lopped off by the shrapnel. But uh, Juliette and Ecphelia are following uh, falling toward that abattoir of chaos. Meanwhile, Valkos on a uh, building across the square has a shadowy figure moving toward him. It's not moving like a hollow. It burst out of the old temple uh, on the other end of the square and is jumping from rooftop to rooftop toward Valkos. Let's start with Juliette Belrose. Juliette, you were using your, is it a line thrower? Line throw is what they call it, yes. A line throw, a device that would allow you to save yourself from this fall. We said that you would have limited effect Unless you left Ecphelia behind. That was the decision. <clears throat> this is desperate because you'll take harm if you fail it. Right. And uh, it's um, desperate for standard effect You'll you, if you leave Ecphelia behind. If not, it's limited effect. Right. Let's talk about this decision. I would love to talk about it. I, Josephine, know that Ecphelia can take damage and like heal much more easily than we can. But Juliette 
can't let Ophelia go. And so she is holding on. Oh. So it'll be with limited effect. Would you like to push yourself for standard uh, effect? No. Very low on stress, eh? If I push myself, anything that happens past that would give me trauma. Take me out of Anything that happens I mean, I past could. how many dots? Uh, more than two. More so than two. I would take two from pushing myself, and then I could take like no more stress whatsoever. As um, usual, as these scrou- as usual, these scoundrels are all stressed out. Okay, um, well then I have to decide well, what happens with limited effect. I have to decide well, what happens, and I will tell you what happens after you roll. Or we can do this. Yeah, we can do this at the edge of stress again. I've done this before. Fine, I will push myself to increase the effect. Okay. And I'm now one away from being traumatized. Okay, great. And this will get you over to the rooftop that Valkos is on if you succeed. They'll get you both over there. Here we go. Five. Success, Success, Success. with a consequence. With a consequence. Amazing. I'm going to rule that the consequence is that you're in a poor position when you get there. So you okay. get all the way over to Valkos's building, but instead of being on your feet beside Valkos as this figure rushes toward him, both of you are hanging off the side of this building by your hands and by the line that you threw over there. So you're not you have you're you haven't quite climbed up there. You don't have firm footing and of course the hollows beneath you, they're not quite totally destroyed, right? And they are <gasps> looking up at you and moaning in their sort of air-sucking way that they do. Valkos, this figure lands on the building uh, in front of you. It is heavily cloaked in uh, black furs and uh, uh, light-absorbing fabrics. Um, there is a, a sort of a, a, a scarf uh, masking this figure's face. And, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna then say, in my Severosi tongue, do you wish death, for it welcomes you if you try. <laughs> um, this uh, person pulls down the scarf, and you're looking at a beautiful young man with flowing hair, a very, very pale complexion. Oh, fuck. The, uh, that he tosses aside his cloak and in perfect Severosi he says you must desire death or you would have not come here and then he begins to approach you and uh, throw uh, a blow toward you right I'm going to retaliate but I'm going to imbue my um, my uh, my hammer with my ghost fighter skill which gives me advantage over anything that is supernatural. Right. Uh, let's look at that. Um, so we we this know exactly how it works. <laughs> Amazing. Perfect. Amazing. So, Ghost Fighter, um, you imbue your hands or melee weapons. Uh, with spirit energy, you gain potency in combat versus the supernatural. Very good. You gain potency. That's excellent because that will mitigate one of the two tiers above you this person is. This person is right. tier three. You still right. have limited effect against him. Okay. Um, okay. You could still, he could use his other ability, right? Because your other ability is based off you pushing yourself, right? Yeah. I was going to say, could I expend armor to push myself or do I have to have the battleborn ability where I could expend special armor? I am afraid you have to mm. have that battleborn ability. Okay. That's fine. Um, but by large weapon, would put him down a tier, right? Surely, because it's a large weapon. No, it's no, your lar- other ability. Your, your. Well, my, my. The thing is, is I'm one stress away from literally. Oh, oh, I so see. So the thing I is, see, like, see, remember, so when we fought the thirteen, <laughs> I pushed them down a tier with my, um, yeah. with my not to be trifled with, but I also pushed them down another tier with my weapon, to make them my the same tier as I did. So surely, because I have a large weapon. I'm making this enemy my, the same tier that I am. Well, let's look at large weapon. A weapon meant for two hands, a battle axe, greatsword, warhammer, or pole armor. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Let me think. 
Because that's how I was able to take down the tier 313, right? You knocked them down a tier with the knocked them trifled. I thought it was yeah, actually because you used not ability. to be trifled oh, shit. with. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and narrate. Just to begin, this is how you know all of this stuff about tier. You hit the wrist of this gentleman with your huge war hammer, and it just deflects it. Uh, and now... He's throwing kicks. He's doing some sort of like martial arts type shit toward you, <laughs> moving like a blur. Do you have a way? And listen, Falcos, sometimes there isn't a way. Sometimes there just isn't a way to get past all of that stuff. Sometimes limited effect might be all you can do and maybe, just maybe it will be enough. Or maybe you have another way to kind of you get know potency. What? I've imbued, I've imbued my I've imbued my thing right. That's knocked him down one, and as he's coming, I take a rage essence vial, and that increases my is. strength. So as he's coming, you take a rage essence vial. So here's what I want: I want you, in order to take a rage essence vial while being attacked, I need an action roll. Okay, skirmish. And it is going to be a desperate action roll. Okay. Uh, skirmish makes sense, and. Uh, you're not going to hit him or anything. You're just going to get your Rage Essence file yep. taken. Okay? Cool. So, um, you, uh, it's going to be desperate uh, for standard effect. You will take the Rage Essence file. Cool. <laughs> success with a consequence. Success with a consequence. Uh, success with a consequence is um, you do take a level one harm anyway, because you Ugh. literally are like b batting off his blows with your hammer and trying to get your essence vial out. And um, he manages to get one blow in on you and it hurts. I'm gonna call it black eye. Can I, before I take that effect, expend one of my armor then? Ah, uh, now that you could, that is what you could do. So I've got a heavy armor, which is three. Mm -hmm. So if I take one off, that would take away that harm, right? Uh, that's right. Absolutely, it would. Okay. There we go. So I've got two now left. you have the rage essence vial imbibed, and it starts to uh, it starts to kick in, and now you can actually fight this guy. Right. I'm definitely gonna skirmish this man. Or this okay. Beast. <laughs> Great. Um, it is uh, still desperate, and we're gonna see what happens with that in just a second because okay. I want to know what Juliet and Ecphelia want to do. I would like. Hey. To, we're dangling uh, from the uh, lip right. of this of this structure. Yeah. Um, um, Ekaprag's body is a gymnast's body, so he's going to lively kind of swing up, and because um, uh, the widow uh, was so kind, going to hold out uh, their hand to assist her up onto the building. Very good. I think that I need an action roll, of course. And uh, the consequences will be that Juliet is dropped if this is not successful. You can't fall, Eka Prag. Only Juliet can. Oh, shit. Oh, and uh, I think we'll only have Ekphelia roll this. What action are you going to use? Um, because I'm trying to, like, go up there like uh, Ariel Silk's Dancer's Grace. Uh, we're back in finesse territory. Finesse? I'm trying to get, like, a foothold to make myself, like, a, a, a sturdy object that, that she can climb, basically. Understood. This will be um, this will be risky for standard effect. Okay. That's a six. A full six. Oh, God. <laughs> you uh, yank Juliet up onto the building, and now you guys are on top of the building and watching as Valkos goes hand to hand or hammer to hand with whoever this is. We have our first super sexy bad guy. <laughs> he is so sexy and in fact as you achieve a foothold and climb up onto the building he glances quickly toward you Ekphelia your eyes meet you hear an intake of breath from him and you realize he is like you oh boy and with that fucking hammer comes out of nowhere comes yeah the back of it. <laughs> We'll see how it does. What does it do? It, it now can have standard effect against him, right. so that's good. Um, but remember, the Rage Essence file has made you irrationally aggressive, Valkos. Mm -hmm. oh I need boy. you to make sure to roleplay that 
Not going to be a lot of calculation from Valkos for the remainder of the score, probably. So, uh, let's do this. Go to six. Um, Mm. Oh, wow. I was going to say desperate uh, for standard effect, but you (laughs) got a six. So, I'm going to rule that with a six, you, um, you avoid any harm and you smash this person in the chest and he um, he falls back a little bit, giving you all an opportunity to do something before he's on top of you again. Okay. Who would like to act, and what would you like to do? I will I would act. like. Oh, oh go you go, it. you go. No, you're faster. This makes more sense that you would jump in. I'm just gonna take take a swing and tick off on my uh, on my inventory uh, spirit bane charm, which um. Swings out over the collar, and uh, holding that uh, almost like a like a like a rosary in my fist, I will begin to advance on this um, on this man who has fallen back, and um, just saying. No, 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 no. Got to clear you out. Out, I say, as I move uh, forward. It sounds like you're trying to use the spirit bane charm like one might use a cross or something that's, of that that's nature. Correct. Okay. Um, well, uh, if this is in fact a creature like yourself, there is a spirit inside of it, right? That's so right. Um, I think that it could work, but I think that the tear applies here. I think that um, you are looking at a tier three versus your tier one. So how are you handling that? Actually, I'll let you have a tier for free because you are the same type of creature, mm-hmm. right? So right now you have limited effect. Would you like to use that limited effect or would you like to figure out a way you could push yourself to get standard effect or you could figure out another way to get more effect? Um, I uh. Yeah, uh, I mean, how to get more effect. Uh, Is it already desperate? You can't trade those, right? Oh, yeah, you can sometimes trade position for effect. Have I said what it was yet? I don't think that it... I don't think so. Um, Yeah, um, trading position for effect? Yeah, uh, let's make it... Yeah, go ahead. Actually, okay, I might do this instead. Um... This is this is not merely a an attack. This is a strategy. Ecphelia is probing for weaknesses right now, not just simply trying to push them away. That would be that would be a bonus. And as I approach, my mind reaches out and and sees as this comes out um, what this thing fears. If 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 not this charm, what? with my uh, uh, arcane sight. Interesting. Um, I'm and looking you have for a, tr- you're looking using for the a power. thoughts and feelings, yes. You're, you're using a power. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll allow it, I'll allow it. So um, you can now get standard effect. <clears throat> um, so let's say it's desperate for standard effect because this thing also has its own mental attacks it can make against you. Great. Um, so I think I'm trying to, sw- it sounds like I'm trying to sway with my words. So I guess that would be the Action? Yes, and as your uh, mind probes into it, it fights back, and uh, its eyes are piercing into yours, and it's smiling, uh, and uh, it is trying to overwhelm you with the force of its personality, and so let's roll and see what happens. Great. Desperados, here we go. Uh Aha. Oh, a six. You know that what this this being fears it more than anything is exposure. It did not want anyone to know that it was down here at all. And it so fears exposure that you think that it doesn't only dwell down here. It probably has some sort of life above this area. Great. Right? Okay. You feel it moving among parties, much like the children mass party you once attended. Mm-hmm. You feel it kissing the hands of fine ladies and 
talking to high-ranking members of the government, this is someone of note, not just a dweller of the underworld. Okay, great. Um, And because you succeeded, you take no mental harm from it, and uh, you can now tell me how you get leverage over it. How do you, what do you sway it to do? Okay, then uh, then holding that up, knowing that this might be just, just like, out, out. Our quarrel isn't with you. Um, these rotting husks have to go, and then so shall we. You have nothing to fear from us, clearly. Let us be about our business, and you can continue to be about yours. These husks. And it uh, gives a a look to Juliet really quick, trying to silence her. These husks represent an investment. Years of work. How do you intend to remunerate that loss for me? And how can I be sure of your silence? Can I do something? You may, of course. I'm gonna just try to burn this guy. <laughs> Cause I was gonna literally say like, I'm in rage I, mode right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh but you're, oh my you're God. Enraged. You are in rage you're enraged. mode. Valkos, you looked at me like that. Valkos, I was gonna throw you, a fire Two things have to happen. You <clears throat> may certainly do that, Juliet, but Valkos, you're in rage mode right now, uh, unless you uh, begin, uh, trying to smash this guy with your hammer uh you're going yeah you must start uh smashing this guy with your hammer or you can resist i think what i'm gonna do is i'm going to because i feel like i think i would have clicked what is going on or like i could have you know the, the the fact that it looks like ecphelia or feels there's a vibe of it right i've got that feeling hence why i imbued it I think what ends up happening is I'm going to essentially try to grapple the spirit itself and rip it from its body. So as this kind of, as they are talking, my, my, I'm going to reach with my hand almost inside of the, you know, almost try to grab the spirit and rip it out in a way. Um, Okay. Touch the spirit from the body. I'm sorry, Uh Juliet, you can still try some uh, form of your action. I just had to remind us that uh, Valkos cannot stop attacking. So Valkos has decided to go hand to hand, but Valkos has the ghost fighter ability. Can Valkos rip it free? Well, let's see. Um, We, how did we, how did we calculate Valkos' ability to affect this thing before? Uh, Ghost fighter and the rage essence file. Yes, both should mitigate its tier. Uh, but I'm going to say ripping a spirit free just using... What action are you using? Skirmish. I'm getting in there. It's almost like I'm trying to do, you know, the what came from the idea of ripping the heart of the uh, of my uncle. Or it's almost like trying to attack the spirit itself. Or Desperate. even knock it out with the knock it out with a hammer again, you know. Desperate for a limited effect, and I want Juliet's uh, action to go off about the same time. Juliet, what are you going to do? Yeah, sorry. In my mind, they're simultaneous as well. I'm throwing fire oil onto this creature, You're shattering a vial onto. Him. So, Valkos, I say limited effect because it's just very hard to rip the soul out of something. Uh, it's almost for impossible. Sure. <laughs> But Is perhaps, or, but but you're not, you know, you're in rage mode, so you might not quite know that or have calculated no. that. Um, I and think that in this case, if you don't mind, I think that you should try what you were going to do without the realization for your character that it will be sure, a limited sure. effect. I think it's, yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. And um, um, Juliet, what are you going to roll? Um, tinker. Fire oil is tier three, by the way, as well. That's good. Risky for standard effect. And let's can have I, you both. Oh, yeah. What would you like to can do? Can I trade positions for great effect? Yes. Desperate for great effect. Here we go. All these battles. Success with a consequence from Juliet. And what about Valkos? I failed. You oh. just fully failed. Oh, no. 
Okay. Oh boy. Here's what happens. Valkos <laughs> runs forward and attempts to rip the spirit out of this entity. Valkos, when you touch the spirit for a moment, you are suddenly like just completely paralyzed. The rage melts away. This thing has such mastery of the soul inside of it that it just infects you for a moment with its iron will. And you find yourself frozen in place, unable to act. Uh, Tears pour from your eyes and blood trickles out of your nose. And that's when Juliet's firebomb hits. <laughs> it does ignite this entity, but it also ignites Valkos, and it ignites Valkos for a level three harm. Uh-huh. We're gonna ca- we're gonna call it. <laughs> we're gonna call it. What do we sh- should we call it? Broiled. <laughs> no, uh, what's a good word for it? Scorched. Scorched. Uh, Holy scorched. Shit. Level three harm. That means you need help. You're essentially out of the score. What? Yeah, that's right. I, I hope mean, it Valcos really fucked up this guy too. Wait, no. My armor. Can I expend my armor? <laughs> you can. Yes! <laughs> it will now okay, only be a level it. two harm, Scorched. Okay. It takes fine. it down one level? Okay, I see. Um, boom! The bomb goes off. Valkos <clears throat> catches on fire. So does this person. Uh, and uh, both of them are screaming for a moment. Well, I don't want to put words into Valkos's mouth. But this figure uh, is covered in flame. And it turns and leaps away. Leaps to the next building. It's catching the buildings on fire as it leaps. And I believe that there was an inferno clock. Oh, God. Oh, come. <laughs> I'll go ahead and tick that. But I'm come not going to tick it twice. I'm not going to tick it twice. Come on! Come uh, on! By only ticking it once, it, it's only have one segment. It's only have one segment. Now uh, you gave tick. me two consequences for my one action. Oh, you're right, but sometimes two consequences <laughs> happen. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, okay. <sighs> so uh, much for negotiations then. Um, right. So <laughs> this uh, entity, this person is running from you. His cloak is burning. Uh, you hear him screaming um, as he uh, leaps from building to building, uh, trying to get away into the shadows. Valkos, you're scorched but still standing. What do you all want to do? Well, Axelia, it- you haven't acted in a moment. Yeah. What is the status of the of the um, hollows? The hollows are immobile. They are. Uh, they've been taken out of. The only way you'd have danger from them is if you were mm. literally laying on the ground beside them, with okay. an, uh, without an ability to get up. Like they're all like dragging themselves with like entrails, kind of spilling out of their torsos. They're a mess. Great, that's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that sounds like we've pretty darn near cleared this space. It of does. Hollows. Sounds like this house is clear. We've just got this one unexpected tenant down here. Um, if I'm, he escapes, that's fine. As long as he's not here. I'm calm, aren't I? No. You're calm now. Yeah, it took okay. the rage right out of you. I, I can kill the last of these zombies if they're just lying around. I just, I've got more grenades. Yeah, or melt them or something. With the... Yeah, and I'm going to work on putting out the fire, I think. Yeah. You have a feeling I should stop setting things on fire? Specifically, yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. So Valkos is going to put out the fire. Juliet is going to destroy what's left of the hollows. Ekphelia, is there anything that you'd like to do? I'm going to follow our friend. Unless, uh, um, Juliet, do you have anything to put out fires still? Yeah, I can give you Alkahest. Okay. Cool. Ekphelia, I want an action to follow uh, this uh, creature and uh, uh, track it. Prowl. And the consequence, of course, if you fail is that it will get clean away and you won't learn anything else. 
but if you succeed, you will learn something or maybe even catch up with it and stop it from escaping. And so, um, yeah, let's make this controlled because you already won. Controlled for standard effect. Oh, six. Oh, six. six. Oh, six. oh, yes. You, oh, corner it, you corner it inside the church where you see that there has been an elaborate occult workshop built here. There is an enormous magical circle with candles all around it, skulls hanging from various ropes uh, and uh, a strange alchemical apparatus in the sec- in the center um, with, by the way, a human being tied down to stakes in the middle of the circle. Alive? Alive. <coughs> Gag in its mouth. Charming what you've see, done with the place. Ecphelia, Hollows don't spawn out of nowhere. They must be created. Yes. This, these are leftovers. That's right. And so no. uh, no. our friend, the strange assailant, is cowering in the corner, uh, burnt, uh, like uh, rifling through his alchemical regents as you enter. And you said, love what you've done with the place, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah, let's not lose that bit you. of color. <laughs> no. Yes. Uh, and um, I think this might be the end of the score. I think I'm going to allow you to decide what you do here, and that will end the story of this score. So, what do you do? Um, tell me this, Jared. Can I ju- discern also from what I'm seeing? Like, when I killed... Back in the Imperial City, I didn't, I, to my knowledge, I didn't make a hull. Um, making a hull would seem to, or a, or a hollow, it would seem to be like draining them of their life essence while including these occult elements. That's correct. You, okay. Um, interesting. Okay. Huh. So he's building an army or something. Um, he turns and sees you. He puts down the tools that he was digging out of his case and goes, Welcome. Very interesting indeed. Yes. As, as I said before, my rather perturbable friends interrupted us. And I do apologize on their behalf. We have no quarrel with you. Quite a project you have. Uh, I'm only terribly sorry that we've set you back. It is always stimulating to meet one of my own kind. Keep your silence. I know that you've probed my mind. Keep your silence and I will vacate these tunnels. You have my promise. But silence shall be kept. If your promise is broken, I will find your friends and break them. Of that I have no doubt. Now, I was going to have a bit of lunch. Would you care to join me? Now before I sit down with a companion, Ducky, and I understand that of course. Discretion is the order of the day. I like to know to whom I'm speaking and with whom I'm having the pleasure. But aliases are de rigueur in Duskfall, are they not? I work with many aliases. What shall I call you? Why are you playing this game with me? You already know my name. And thinking for a moment, it comes to you like a memory. Skurlock. Yes. Um. And that is when he rips the gag away from the man that's staked naked to the pentagram. He reaches down and kisses him and starts to breathe in his life force. Then he breaks away, looks up at you and goes, it's delicious. The 
pleasures that are solitary have their own delectation. But there is something fine and rarefied about a pleasure that can be shared. And, uh, Ecphelia also indulges. Oh my god. <gasps> Your secret is safe and as good as forgotten. So, we will end the story of this score there. <laughs> by way of epilogue, by the time that Valkos and Juliet join you in the church, Skurlock is gone. And so, you have cleared the tunnels. And you can return to the foundation. A job well done. And mm. I want to congratulate Ooh. the remnant on a very well carried out score. Audience at home, please give them a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we did it. Let's segue smoothly into downtime. But first, I think that perhaps a break is in order. Uh, a little earlier than we usually take it, but I think right now we should take a break from our sponsors. When we come back, we will do downtime and we will prepare for the final score of the season. So we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, what's up, guys? Jared Logan here. I feel a cold wind blowing off the tundra, and that means it's time for me to tell you about Blood of the Wild. Blood of the Wild is our new audio-only show coming to the Glass Cannon Network where we enter the realm of the Mammoth Lords. I'll be GMing four incredible players through Paizo's Quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. We're going to have Joe O'Brien, Skid Maurer, Mary Lou, and Paula Deming all taking on the roles of scouts in a vast wilderness setting filled with dinosaurs and rival tribes. You've got to be there. But in order to be there, you have to subscribe to the Glass Cannon Patreon at the $10 or up tier, okay? This new show debuts January 16th, so go to the Glass Cannon Patreon now and subscribe to that $10 tier. Go to patreon.com forward slash glass cannon. That's patreon.com forward slash glass cannon, and we'll see you on the tundra. Welcome back to Haunted City. The Remnant just completed a massive score against a vampire and an army of zombies in subterranean caverns beneath Duskfall. And now they are entitled to some well-earned XP. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about XP. I know this is wild. I forgot about XP. I was like, damn time. Yeah, let's Deep start stress. with Valkos. <laughs> Valkos. Uh, looks like you took some uh, desperate uh, actions. I Would did. you like I'm to move any of those into your main playbook XP I tracker? Put them all in my playbook advancement. Okay. Oh. So. Oh, oh wow. Oh wow. We're in a. Okay. Up. Well, that fills up your playbook advancement tracker, right? Well, I've got two left. Oh, okay, two left. Oh, so you've already put them in there. Okay, yeah. understood. So, you, so uh, I, I understand. Um, well. <laughs> But now you have your um, your character XP, the, the mm. stuff that... Yeah, so did you address a challenge with violence or coercion? I did that. Yes, Definitely. take one that for that. twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Twice? Uh, yeah, twice, sure. The zombies, <sighs> the hollows, and the vamp? Okay, yes. cool. Right. So uh, that means any, you filled it. I filled it. So any, And I'm just going to take for now, just so you know, vigorous. So you recover from harm faster, permanently fill in one of your Whoa. healing segment clocks. Ooh. Take oh. one healing. That's what that is like. useful. Damn, okay. All right, let's go ahead and clear out that tracker and see <laughs> what else you earned. Um, you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Remember when Valkos very quickly made sure to speak in Severosi? <laughs> <laughs> Are you gaming the system? To be honest, no, to be honest with you, I, I, wouldn't, I, would say, I wouldn't even say that that was um, the the I'd say the the one which I would take one for is the uh, when I when I essentially did the cry to the the battle cry to almost like oh, a hunting yeah. cry. So I think that's the one. I don't think the Severosi one, even as much as I'd love the extra XP, I yeah. don't think it's good enough. I think the uh, I think the the battle cry to tactically move something is something that I think is Severosi in regards to almost hunting for ghosts and spirits and stuff. 
I think that makes sense that you are hunting like, you know, a Severosi hunts. Go ahead and take mm. it. Thank you. And you struggled with issues from your vice or trauma. I don't I believe I that. that no. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, let's slide on over to uh, Juliette Bell Rose. Juliette Bell Rose. Yes. So Juliette, are you moving any of any of your? Um, oh, it looks like you filled I your filled, prowess XP. Yes, I filled my prowess XP, and I yeah. think I'm gonna take my first dot in a new ability. Um, since there was training happening. Yes. Uh, I think it only makes sense. Oh man, finesse or skirmish? Finesse or skirmish? Look, if you're role is playing a, it, it might be yeah. skirmish, but at the same, like I would teach you how to skirmish essentially. Okay. Okay. But it de- okay. also, but then it depends on how you fight, right? It depends on how Juliet right. fights. Right. She is, I think. Well. I think we go with skirmish. I think that that's Falcos's influence. Amazing. Yeah. Coming Take in. Take that dot of skirmish. That's <laughs> exciting. Juliet can fight now. And Ooh. let's uh, look at the playbook XP. So um, you only have two filled in so far. So you, mm-hmm. you've got a lot to fill in before you get a new special ability. You definitely addressed a challenge with technical skill or mayhem. I'll give that to you twice. Okay, great. Let's go in fact, Juliet, your tech was really essential on this one. I felt feel like that it came in so much. Yeah. Um, who knew that, you know, really the thing you guys are best at is just destroying an army of zombies. Actually, it makes <laughs> sense because when you send you guys to a party, you essentially you, try to destroy yeah, an army, destroy of, zombies. An army of zombies. zombies yeah. um, you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Yeah, you actually took less effect one time to, or, or you took some sort yes. of yeah, to, to save Ophelia. So could go I, ahead and... Could I say that happened twice, right? I, I stopped to save Ophelia, taking less effect. Um, and... Wait, did we do a group action whenever we went to, like, look at the stuff together? It was, like, just like old times when we were doing... Oh, right. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Did we do it together? I can't believe people we... say I'm a tough GM when I say, Take it twice! Well, yeah, <laughs> it's in the rules. It's in the rules. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm being, but I, yeah. as a GM, I could say no, only take it once. Yeah, we were at a uh, we were at a wall of of cogs and knobs yes. and pipes and ducts, <laughs> and and that's our happy place. That's our right. That's, Struggling with issues from your vice or trauma during the session. I, I don't have trauma, and I didn't struggle with my deceased partner this time. Well, I mean, I kind of did, but we took it as the previous. We just took it as yeah, as for the, expressing your background. Yeah. So, uh, very good. That leaves you with only two more XP to fill in on the playbook for a can new I, special ability. Can I take a, I took a, I took an desperate XP and insight. And can I move my, I've got one in resolve and one in insight. Can I shift those to my playbook and take an ability right now? Well, I guess you can, can't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, according to the rules. So, do it. All right. I'm going to fill it and I'm going to take vengeful. Vengeful. Which is the hound. Oh, ability. we're all vengeful in the remnant. Well, mm-hmm. look, I mean, honestly, aren't we? You get extra it's... XP. Oh my gosh, you get extra XP. Wait, does that apply to something Valkos did this time? I don't, don't know. When you when you pay back someone who who harmed you or someone you care about. I don't no. think we were doing that no. this time. Yeah. No, that didn't happen it seems, this time. It seems um like the timing for us doing this vengeful seems right to take now. Feels like the remnant does that kind of a lot, and it's going to help you get more XP. Yeah, um, it also helps your crew get XP if they helped yeah. you do it. So, oh, excellent! All right, so um, that's what I'm taking. All right, now I'm just uh, p- pulling up all of Ross's characters, and <laughs> I have Ekphelia. Ekphelia. Like, Let's yeah. look. How many? I don't. I don't see a lot of desperate actions here. I see one. A lot of my actions this time were were assistance based. <laughs> mm. That's right. Uh, you were the helpful vampire. A novel that I wrote one time. That was the title, the helpful vampire. <laughs> very helpful vampire. The very helpful vampire for children three to six. Okay, so uh, do you want to put that into playbook advancement or keep that there in resolve? I'm gonna keep that there for now. Okay. Let's look at your playbook because it looks like you filled it up last time and used all your XP. That's right, um, I got a new ability you, you, last time. You displayed your dominance or slayed without mercy. I think uh, giving a little uh, 
um, co-suck to someone at the end of that um, score. Oh. That's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, that's slang without mercy. Do, Take do it. Not, did you say, say co-suck? Did you not enjoy the, the turn of phrase <laughs> co-suck? <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. When Lord Skurlock and I lady in the tramped that one person, <laughs> um, that was uh, yes, he was a noodle of spaghetti beneath your hungry, hungry fangs. Um, oh man! All right, yeah, take that. I think take it once, but you take it. All right. Um, you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. If in this case, it feels a like yes, but I don't know how. Okay, if I can argue that a vampire's background is their former life. In that moment of spark at the wall of of um, machinery, where where um, we had that little moment of like, we used to have some like this. Is that? Oh, well. I think so too. Go ahead and take that. That's great. Um, um, and then finally, you struggle with issues from your vice traumas I or mean, strictures all the time. <laughs> I, 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 I I fed again. Um, I didn't, but uh. And I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you're going to feed tell you a lot. You're going to feed a lot. So I, I don't think I can give it to you every time you feed. Sure. And we no, already I, gave it to you in the, you know, the dominance slayed without mercy category. Right. I think uh, if I can be a good advocate for myself, I think, Please. Uh, mercilessly slaying the various uh, lifeless bodies is pretty vicious. Um that this is all being done just so we can get maps that will strategically undermine Unifero's goes back to my obsession. Um, and my my saving of the the body of uh, Juliette Bell Rose, when I could very well have not, much as she could have left me behind on that rooftop, I could have dropped her from the other rooftop. Um, but I would never do that to someone for whom my uh, love borders on obsession. And as for... <laughs> And as for whether or not I've been secretive about things, well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, would it? Ah, uh, right. Okay, take it twice. <laughs> Brilliant. Take it twice. Uh, and that concludes our PC XP. And now let's go into the crew <laughs> XP. And we start with... Oh, my God. We didn't... We didn't decrease heat loss. It's fine, actually. I think we're... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're I'm just gonna realizing in a minute. looking at it. Yeah. So um, XP for the crew. Execute a successful burglary, espionage, robbery, or sabotage operation. Not this time. No, we didn't. No? Is this not think a, it's a sabotage? sabotage? How is it a sabotage? Well, it's about vampires' uh, operations. Yeah, I mean, like, it was no. literally... But also, like, like, I think... I killed a bunch of people in a rival gang. I sabotaged them. But I would, I would say that it's essentially the, you know, the because of the way that we went about it, it was more of a sabotage rather than necessarily an assault, right? We lured them into a space and we destroyed it, this, you know, attacked them that way. Everything was almost like a, almost like an ambush. Surely, yes. I mean, I don't know if there is. I mean, it, we, it doesn't count. But that's still an ambush. Still doesn't count we as a sabotage. Him of his home. We robbed him of his home and all of his work. All right, everybody, stop. I love you all, but it is not. It is none of those things. It just isn't. <laughs> Contend with challenges above your you current station. It. You certainly did. I'm clicking that for you. Bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one. Yeah, in fact, uh, you now have plus one with the foundation. Oh. So your uh, your um your uh, status with the foundation is now at plus two. They are friendly with you. Okay. Do we uh, did we get an XP from that as well? Or no? Yes. Okay. Yes, you do. Um, did I click it already? No. Okay, no. I'm clicking it right now. <laughs> and, and then finally, express the goals, drives inner conflict, and essential nature of the crew. Well, That's guess. a tough one. I, I would we, argue that we did because I think we're all aligned in fucking up the spark rights. Right. Right. This oh, is the reason right. we did this. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there was even talk with Seljak about exactly. fucking up the spark. And that's race. kind of why could it count as two? Because ultimately one was a talk with Seljak from my side and saying that we are going to screw them up spiritually. But then also the fact that Josephine and Ross are, you know, their characters are essentially wanting to get Unaferos. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to you for one. I think okay. only one. It's all about it's all about the same job. It's all about here. You know, we're all no, scoundrels. I appreciate here. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Um 
Well done, guys. And now, I think it's time to move on to payout, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, let's look at that. Yeah, it's time to move on to our payout. So first of all, heat. I think for your heat, two heat. That's a st controlled standard exposure. Okay. I think that's fair. That does leave you one heat away. Oh, shit. Um, I, I just marked it on rep. <laughs> that does leave you one heat away from uh, a wanted level wanted. again. <clears throat> so you'd be at wanted two, and uh, things are going to get rough for you if, if it starts getting up that high. All right, so that's what happens there. In terms of rep, in terms of rep, you automatically get two rep, and then you uh, definitely took on a challenge above your station, and then you gained turf from this. What? So, yes, yeah. remember you did this in order to get oh, covert to get drops. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you yes. have now taken the covert drops claim because uh, I would like to cut to a scene at the foundation, uh, actually the Centralia Club where the foundation meets. Who would like to be present? I'm Juliet, you set up the job. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm. Ecphelia, probably dangerous for you to go yeah, there. I'm yeah, bringing I'm not... Valkos with me. Yeah, hundred percent. I've, I've kind of got a hood. Time. Um, a hood on, as you know, and just sort of like an eye poking at the side. Well, well, we've had our. By the way, you're in a smoky conference room again, a smoky <laughs> uh, boardroom, uh, and he is pouring another snifter of gray liquor uh, and setting it down in front of Juliet and another snifter for Valkos. And all of the men are cheer cheersing you as August says, Well, well, we've sent up some agents to look into your work, and we are happy to say you have clear those tunnels of danger. Thank you so much for this very excellent work. To your health. Did he give he, me one or did he just give it to Valkos? He, he handed you both. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll drink. Very Cheers. good. It is a very alcoholic, but it smells a bit like gasoline. <laughs> All right, great. <clears throat> uh, thank you for entrusting the remnant with this job. Now uh, I'm entrusting you with more than that. I've had the liberty of having a copy of our secret map of the under passages of the city copied for you. And he slides a sort of uh, valleys toward you. Um, and when you open it up, you can see that indeed there's a big fold out map inside. Is this August that I'm Talking it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, good sir, August. This is uh, very much appreciated and uh, would come in very handy. Now, do know we are uh, not far should you ever need us. I will remember how to get in touch with you. And you, you strapping lad. Very nice to meet you. I mean, Pats you on the shoulder, Valkos. Our payment. <laughs> yes, you'll find the maps are all in order. If you uh, investigate the physical world that they represent, you'll see that they are quite accurate. No gold. I believe our deal was for the maps, was it not, Miss Bellrose? <laughs> Hmm. I have a question before I answer this. Uh, was Vimes here when we came in? Did he escort mm. us or was he not? Oh, that's a great question. Vimes was not here. Yes, very good. Very good. You're dealing with someone named okay. Brogan on the way in. Brogan? Yeah, is his Brogan... name is Brogan. Okay. Uh, did Brogan, Brogan is, uh, Brogan is a, a valid as well, but Brogan is a short and sort of stout. Did Brogan uh, treat me the same way as Vimes did or was Brogan a little... You were welcomed in. Great. Um, <clears throat> it is true. Uh, that was our agreement. Uh, though some of us are a little more uh, antsy for a gold, you see, coin. <clears throat> Perhaps uh, 
it would be a show of good faith in this arrangement between our two factions. If we were to give you further payment than what was agreed upon. Well, he we turns did. back to all of his fellows and everybody bursts out laughing. <laughs> oh, that's rich, I'll say, eh, August? <laughs> very droll, very droll. We love how you do business. Mm. Unfortunately, there will be no other coin forthcoming. As expected. <clears throat> Come, Miss Belrose. I believe we've got what we've needed. Very well. Goodbye, gentlemen. And to you, was it October, December, July? <laughs> oh, my name. My name is August. You August. will remember it. It is carven into the foundation of this city. Yes. And he shuts the door in your face. Look, that's the thing about names. They also carve them in Garrett gravestones. Come, let's go. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, so you have earned the covert drops bit of turf. You are full in your rep tracker. However, I don't believe right. you have enough coin to upgrade no. yet. You have six coin. You need 16 coin. Jesus. If okay. you can believe it. How much coin does each of the characters have individually? Um, <laughs> I Did I misclick or something? Did we ever put money in our stash? Because I have three in the stash, and I don't remember doing that. But a lot of time has passed since our like first yeah, I, few games. Yeah, I mean... Do you I have spend, anything in your stash? I think the most I important spend, part of any role-playing game, bookkeeping. <laughs> Book I, know. I don't know if it was a misclick. I do remember you guys, I think, at some point moving coin into your stash, which okay. is some yes. from your coin on hand, yeah. if yeah, you recall. Because yeah. your stash goes toward your yeah. retirement, uh, which is oh, kind true. of important for these yes. types yeah. of characters. So uh, I wouldn't recommend moving it out of the stash because you also no, get a diminished yeah. return for moving it out of the stash. You oh. you spend coin to get it out of the stash. Oh, okay, okay. But I was so, just curious, just since we're looking, you know, I have one coin on me, um, and I, I don't. Was gonna, I, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. So the, you remember when we were in that brothel in that horrible city? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember coin. that. <laughs> spent, like, that was three real coin. cool. I remember. Never that. forget it. Was that yeah. stupid? I mean. <laughs> No, was, you didn't, mean, you like, didn't move it out of your stash, did no, you? No, I took it out. I took it out of my coin. Yeah, your coin right there under your healing clock. Yeah, you can certainly move it out of there. Then, um, that's yeah, why you have that a coin a stupid on hand. Move though, right? I mean, like I shouldn't have spent like three coin on people that I'm just gonna like look at. I mean, wait, slow down. Are you telling me? So you know that coin d doesn't actually mean one for one the number of coins you have. Oh, that's it's actually. What he Oh what? no! You you owed coin back. How many did you have? You 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 had three. I had three. And you spent three. Yeah, yeah. That's you know why what? I was shocked. Take it back. You know what you time. actually have, Valkos? What? You have three because yeah. it would only be a very small fraction of one coin. That right. You spent. Okay. I went that ahead makes and filled so in. so much sense, man. Because I was like. Yeah, I'm gonna role play, and then afterwards I was thinking to myself, "What the fuck were you doing, bro?" Yeah. Like, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm giving you back all three of those coins. I just placed okay, them on okay. your character sheet. So, um, and then, if we think ahead, this next job promised us it was eight coin with two going towards our payment, so six coin. But we just unlocked covert drop, so we'll get plus two coin for if we're successful for a sabotage. Mm. So, potentially eight coin coming in. Potentially. Which would bring you up to 14 coin? Yeah. All right. All together. Yeah. A stone's throw from level two, from tier so two. So if that's the case, then if, oh, so what? And is that including all our gold together? No, or, no, no, 14 and then, then you, you guys could throw in cat. You guys could throw in your cash so, on hand, your coin on hand. We've gotten our sheets. There's some potential. Yep. That's of the next gig, right? Yep, yep. All right, cool. Okay. After we'll the next gig. Anyway. Oh yes, of course, because I, I negotiated six, yeah. eight, but yeah. two yeah. take yeah. away because of the good deal. All right, cool. All right, um, so we've this. done, we've done, we've done payout, we've done heat, 
And now yeah. it's time for entanglements. And oh, you shit. still have a you still at one at level one. So would someone like to roll one die and tell me what you roll? Uh, okay. We'll find I'll out what it. your entanglements Go are. Go for it. That is risky too. You got a two. Okay. So um, over the course of several days, maybe even a week that you return from the score you just completed, you uh, have your ear to the ground and you, uh, you find out that uh, the Grey Cloaks, which are a rival gang, are taking a lot of territory in Six Towers. And the reason you feel threatened by this is that when you return to your grotto, you soon learn that they've taken territory directly above your secret headquarters. There is a, a tobacconist uh, that is uh, located above your grotto. Um, your, your grotto is subterranean, but there's a tobacconist on the street level and they have taken apartments above that tobacconist. So now there's a gang right on your doorstep and it's a rival gang. Hmm. You can forfeit two rep and let them stay there or give them two coin to get them to clear out or you can stand up to them and lose a status with them. And you know very little about them. They're called the Grey Cloaks. I would stand up to them. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I know what Velcros wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, eat them. We yeah. really don't yeah. know anything about them as someone who grew up in Akaros. Um, why don't you roll something, uh, and this is just a gather information type thing, uh, okay. to, uh, see what you know about them. I'll roll my survey. Or do you want me to roll insight? Like the Ooh, actual... uh, interesting, but that that's usually just rolled for okay. resisting and things like that. Why don't you you can roll your survey if you'd like? Okay. A six. Ooh. A six. Uh, very good information. Then um, by keeping an eye on the gray cloaks for you know many weeks before this, because you're aware of which gangs inhabit the same neighborhood as you, uh, Juliet. You know that the gray cloaks are actually former blue coats who oh. claim they were all framed for something that they didn't do and they were kicked off the force. And the Grey Cloaks look like cops even though they're a criminal gang, meaning they're all very clean cut. They're all, they all have thumb-shaped heads, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, they wear the Duskfall equivalent of aviator shades everywhere. Uh, uh, and then the little Victorian add-on is that they all have thick handlebar mustaches. <laughs> okay. So, so buzz uh, cuts, uh, handlebar mustaches, black goggles, and uh, the, even their uh, uh, their apparel is sort of a, you know, they're used to like very functional apparel. So they don't <clears> wear like a lot of capes or uh, frills. Like they wear very workmanlike clothing. Um, well, I'll make sure we all, yeah, we all know that. I will convey that to everyone for sure. So they are former blue coats, uh, and they are perched right on top of yeah. your hideout. What are you going to do? Are you going to stand up to them, or pay two coin, or forfeit two red? Would, we already would, have would, to pay coin to to yes. the echoes. This is some bullshit. Yeah, no right. It's called an entanglement. It's <laughs> part of the rules. Hey, if you I'm don't like it, to you. please I'm talk to saying... John Harper and Evil Hat Studio. <laughs> no, I'm not oh saying that God. to you as GM. No, 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 no. I'm saying this is our attitude as a crew. It's our attitude. We should... sure. We're frustrated, you see? Yeah. Um, we should stand up. Yeah, I'm going to stand. Yeah, we're going to stand up to him. Unless you feel differently, Ross. Yeah, I feel it, yeah. Um, I, I'm like, bribery would seem to be the sort of thing that this lot responds to. But, um,. I'm done being pushed around. Yeah. We're paying up to enough. Enough heads around the neighborhood. Without adding one more to the welfare line. Let's, uh, let's tell them to ship out. <clears throat> then let me place Valkos and the rest of the remnant um, in the apartments above the tobacconist. And let me 
know how it is you exactly that you scare them off. This Keeping in sick. mind, these are former cops. They are not easily intimidated. You automatically are going to get negative one status with them. And your, your attempt right now is going to succeed no matter what. I'm not saying that you don't succeed. I just want to know what you did. Mm. What you did to piss them off. I think um, <clears throat> rather than uh, break bones or attack them, we uh, stink up the place and dump carcasses, and rotting sort of shit all over their apartment and essentially say it's a warning not to you know that they will be pretty much rotting carcasses at the end of it if they don't yeah. fuck off can I can we uh, I have binding oil can we like bind one like crossed glued to their door one of these oh. rotting corpses I love this. You oh, threatened no. them with uh, like a rotting corpse in their apartments. I think that more than scaring them, it just sort of, they can't stay here anymore. It's just <laughs> like, it's putrid. You have soiled this place irrevocably. And so uh, soon you no longer notice gray cloaks hanging around outside the entrance to your grotto, uh, uh, smoking uh, pipes outside of the tobacconists. Uh, they appear to be gone. But the gangs of Duskfall have a long memory. Mm. They will remember who you are and what you did. Okay. Negative one status with the Grey Cloaks. Would you tell me the... Could I know the tier of the Grey Cloaks? Could you know the tier? You could. They are a tier two group. Okay. Mm. Good to know. And that is entanglements. So now I believe we can head on to our downtime activities. You each get two unless Ekphelia uses their special ability to earn mm. three. Mm. And we can use coin to get more, right? <clears throat> That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although if you're going for that <laughs> second tier, I would save it. Precious coin. Um, Precious coin. Well, I'm going to use one. I already know I need to decrease my stress, so one is going to be indulging my vice. Okay, let's begin with that. Juliette, are you going to use the same method you did before? No. Just, you know, stay fresh. Um... I'm going to, I, I think Ju Juliet's thinking is that she really wants to confirm how she feels and solidify because it's getting risky and she's still clinging to this idea of Ophelia even though she sees that uh, she's not all there in front of her. <clears throat> but I think she goes to, goes to her, to Ekphelia. One afternoon, perhaps in the in the grotto, and um, can we presume for atmosphere here that we have some sort of music player? Oh, absolutely! You can have like a, a, a Victorian phonograph, mm -hmm. like a, a cylinder, just like in there. Yes, and uh, and she goes and she puts on their favorite song that they used to dance to together. And what kind of song is it? Um, I think it's ballady, romantic. Probably, probably from like an opera. And yes, like, like yes. An, um, um, yeah, like something Beyond that would. On the light. Brilliant. I saw your spirit Brilliant. there. Beyond <laughs> the light. Mm. No <laughs> lightning separates us. Oh my god. I long to touch Brilliant. your face, love. Beyond the light. <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. No. <laughs> she, she turns and uh, puts her hand out towards Ophelia and asks, May I have this dance? It's like. 
puts some some papers away in his Of course. Of course. And like reaches out Ekaprag's hand to you. And And she swoops Ophelia up into her arms, Ekphelia. And they begin to dance and Beyond the Light <laughs> They just, tell me that you're dead, but your face won't leave my head. <laughs> Beyond the light. Yes. I just love that it's like Spark Right themed. Mm. <laughs> right. <clears throat> um. Okay, so I think that um, as you dance, I want to know how you're feeling before we roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'd love to know I'd love to know how the rule is. We'll see how, how that's this a good dancing way to do was. It. Oh, yeah, should we do the rule and goes. see how, how much it actually yeah. indulged the, yeah, let's see. Yes. Indulged so uh what is your lowest attribute still? Um uh resolve is my lowest attribute. Okay. But so um I, I believe if I hit the indulge vice button it should be you know what, I'll hit resolve that way. I know. Fine, sure. either way. Oh, wait, was shoot. It? I only, you I cleared only one stress. Clear one stress. Okay, oh, so that lets is, you know how it went. Yeah, oh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you're dancing. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and it's, and you're aware, like, as you dance, the, that, uh, that it, um, that, it's Ekaprag's graceful body, a dancer's mm-hmm. body. Um, and the movement is odd and occasionally like jarring. And it's though you can sense that there's almost like a struggle inside them. And what you're feeling is not so much that you're dancing with a person as much as you're dancing with a puppet, um, a dead thing that is being held up by some other force. And that's such little stress that I think like, once again, like as, as this thing like pulls you close, it's like, we needed this, you and I, we needed this. You can feel once again, close to you that like, what this thing is that you are holding is holding itself back. That it, as, as, as close as it's pressing you, it, it wishes that it could push itself through you. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and merge with you. And, and just breathe out the air in your lungs. Oh. Um, Juliette, who's been weeping for weeks, right? But, mm-hmm. but sort of just, as we've said, it's not like she's actively bawling or anything, but I think in this dance, her own tears are flowing within that. It's okay. All will be well. Do you trust me? Of course, darling. Do you trust me? So close. Always. I'll make sure that we're together. We have tonight (laughs) beyond the light. Valka's the ring, the stone on the ring is yeah. like black. And <laughs> oh, the heartbeat is like racing. It's like stressed. Holy shit. I guess. Anyway. Okay. Just flavor. But the, yeah. I, fuck. I got one stress less. That's I am brutal. in bad shape. It's brutal. Yeah. Um, that is brutal. Um, let's move on to someone else's downtime activity while Josephine figures out what she's going to do. Um, I can do a quick, uh, why a quick one. Yes. 
because I think maybe even like coming, like stepping out of the like the the staircase next to the tobacconist, like like palpably hungry, so close to her, so close to her, and uh, just eyes flashing around. And I'm gonna roll hunt and find something to feed on. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, yes. I was like, I'm about to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's roll hunt and let's find something. Where, where do you think you go? Okay, uh, f- that's uh, that's that. That's how much stress you relieve, right? Mm, that's right. The roll that you just did. So that is a four. So where do you think you found your prey? I. Th- mm, okay. <laughs> uh, great. Um. Oh God! Yeah, so hungry. Oh, no. So, so hungry. Um, there's a tobacconist nearby, so I'm like walking, and there's like a little, like a like a kid selling like loose cigarettes, like, oi, gov, <laughs> like, p- p- penny for a smoke, and I'm like, I'll take that bargain, ducky, and um, like just uh, and um, and as I take it from the kid, I'm like, fresh out, as I kind of sh- move back into an alley. Fresh out there, old son. Give Naomi a light, won't you? And as, and as he comes in to with a match, like you just see his little like uh, um, newsy cap like fall to the ground as as he's tugged Jesus. into an alley. That's terrifying. Do you kill this newsy? <laughs> Oi, mister. Um, no, can no, I don't. Say to yourself. Okay. Ah, oh, friend. Ah, yeah. oh, mate. No, uh, I, I do not kill this uh, this newsy. Okay. Uh, leave him perhaps stupefied. that's why you... That's, uh, what's that? I'll leave him stupefied, but that's maybe why I don't... Uh, I think maybe overindulging might imply that. Yes, <laughs> but, I think no. so. That makes sense. Um, yes, so you have fed uh, the bright... Uh, effulgent life force of uh, the young man um, is inside of you. You feel warm again, Ekphilia. So warm, but perhaps not warm enough. And now let us turn to Valkos. Valkos, what is your first downtime activity? I think it's to relieve stress. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to... And I don't think I'm going to go to the Path of Echoes this time. Mm. I think I'm going to go to my old haunts, uh, especially with my new ghost fighter ability. <laughs> I feel like I've um, I've got some form of idea of, of of restrain, but also just a sense of like control a bit, you know? Yes. Last time I was, you know, rolling sort of the lowest and getting the, you know, the highest and again the lowest. But now because I've got like one in insight, I feel like as well, like it just makes a bit more sense to have a bit of, you know, restrain. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. That makes sense. So where exactly are you going? Uh, uh, okay, it's good. I got a six, but I'm gonna tell you where I'm where I'm going. Yeah. So, wow, those Valkos dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I think I'm going to. It's almost like a like a back alley sort of bar. Um, and essentially, you know, I talk to an old contact to. Um, and I ask, I ask specifically for, you know, uh, um, almost like a, you know, so to, to, to a, a, a sort of a, a spirit in which isn't going to, you know, go, you know, ride me crazy, but, but still enjoy themselves, you know. Um, so I'm essentially just, you know, kind of going in, yeah, going, like, going to take this, take this. Uh, Take the spirit and have um, a conversation with them. Yeah, so first of all, the tavern keep goes, Sorry, mate, there's not as uh, much variety since Flint was taken off the field. <laughs> it's slim pickings around here, but then he puts a spirit bottle on the counter and goes, I'm not even quite sure what's in here, but it's yours if you want it. For sure. Okay. So, where do you go to be skin-ridden by this spirit? I think I actually go go to a bar. Very good. 
Mm. Um, you had an excellent experience here. You cleared six stress, right? Yeah. Yeah. You tell me what kind of spirit it is and what happens. So I think uh, the spirit is is almost it's an old it's an old man. I think it's an old old spirit who just really wants the attention like to be it to to be alive again. It's very you know it was a good it was a good role it was a lucky role, and I'm kind of sat at you know this bar with a pint of beer in hand or whatever they drink in in Duskfall. Yeah. And the old man's like. So what do you want? Do you uh, want power or or love? I mean, you could always think that being selfish could... I don't know. Truthfully, I... I feel like she cares for me, but... You know, I've, I've never, don't tell me you've never loved, boy. <laughs> you've loved something. Someone, maybe? I had a dog. It's still love. But she's not a dog. <laughs> well... Maybe in time, you'll learn to accept that you do love her. To love, eh? Excellent. No wonder Six Press went away because that was that was very fascinating okay oh, uh so yeah Beautiful. you know in the past you let the spirits kind of take you over and kind of draw you from one distraction from one sensation to the next but now you are communing with them you are consorting with them you're talking to them and so definitely worth the removal of six stress mm. let's go back to juliette juliette your second downtime activity i gotta indulge my vice again Good I think God. you have to. I have is, to. I can't go is, into this score with this. How are you going to do it now? I'm going to go take down the shrine that I put up for Ophelia. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and I think she, that that speaks for itself. Why don't you go ahead and roll? She is weeping mm. as she does this. Yes. You're removing the stones. Five. There we go. That's more Five. like it. <clears throat> Let me ask, does she feel that Ophelia is definitely Ophelia, or has she decided to move on from Ophelia? What does this symbolize? The Ophelia that she once knew and loved is gone, and she's accepting that. In this moment. What was what was on the shrine other than stones? <clears throat> um, I think she kept bringing Ophelia's favorite flowers. And I don't know if the locket was used up in the ritual, but if it wasn't, then the locket was part of that. Uh, it's part of it. You had to take it to the grotto to do the ritual, yeah. but you, you returned it to the shrine. What are you going to do with the locket? Um, she's going to keep looks like she hasn't let go altogether. <laughs> yeah, I think she is she is letting go that yeah, the Ophelia she knew is here and is is not here anymore. Like past that point and she is grieved long enough. The widow is <clears throat> sad. It's a sad she character. She is sad. She is yeah. sad. She's very sad. And I think it's been a few, you know, it's been a while since the streets, the the, the people in the neighboring uh, area have got, you know, got to hear pretty often her wailing through the streets, right? And I think it's been right. a long time, and this is maybe the last time they'll hear it for a while. Very interesting. Uh, keep in mind, your character can even change their vice if they wish well, to. Well, yeah, I think that wow. this is a point where that might be changing. Mm. Interesting. 
Let's go back to our resident vampire. <clears throat> Ekphelia, you have uh, feasted on delicious life force. What now? Oh, and by the way, I should have mentioned this before. If you think you're going to need anything in order to destroy a Sparkrite facility, mm -hmm. might be a good idea to acquire assets during this downtime. <sighs> Is that a downtime? That's a downtime activity. Do you... Also, you, you something took harm, that, right? You're harmed. Oh Me? yeah, if you took harm, you need. I to did not take harm. No, but Falco's did, right? Okay. I yeah. burned you. Um, I scorched you. Yeah, I'm gonna, I I'm gonna heal. Bad. Heal the next time round. So. Okay. Um, um, uh, another thing that might help you is you have a long-term project to destroy Una Ferros's rep. Mm. Uh, it might it might help to put some ticks onto that clock before you take on a score dealing with Una Ferros. For listeners, audience. The next score that was decided on by the Remnant, uh, queued up right behind the zombie score, was to take out a Sparkrite facility where Unifaros has developed some sort of new electroplasmic weapon. Uh, and uh, a facility that it, uh, has been described as a ghost jail is also on that site. And the, the Path of Echoes has asked the Remnant to take it off the map. Here's a quick question, team. <laughs> How much gold do we have collectively? So I've got three coin. Who, what yeah. else? Who? I have one. You have one? Uh, I have none on my sheet. Okay. I think that is... Did Ekaprag not have any However at all? many Ekaprag had can move over. I looked back at Ekaprag's sheet after seeing that, and there wasn't any on, on mm. his either. Um, okay. So It may be that you spent a little bit, or it may be that... May have been the case. I'm not sure. But um, okay. I think for now I'm not gonna dole out any more. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so you, so the next, if it's successful, we could potentially get eight from the next one, right? Right. Which mm -hmm. will then make that how much? Look, spend coin if we need to. I think we can. We'd still be just one job away, even if we couldn't do it next. Time, right. You know, okay. In the future. Okay. Cool. I, if you want to okay. use, we should. Because I was, I was gonna, I was gonna put, score. I was gonna put one in the vault. Just you know, for safety, <laughs> and then spend two on uh, downtime activities. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, then I'm gonna spend one on a downtime activity too. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, who's next? I believe it was Ekphelia, right? So I, I, my plan was to continue along the path of ruining Unifero's. Um, I think there's a way of doing that that might also tick the acquire asset um, because I I got a um, I got a calling card from her last time where I was allowed to call upon her when last we spoke and um, it seems like um, so perhaps we can arrange a meeting and um uh, yes, I think you can. Where are you meeting her? I would love it if I could meet at her residence. If that, se if that seems too... She's favorite. careful. Yeah. Give me an action roll. Um, great. Uh, sway. Very good. Uh, risky for standard effect. Or wait... It's a long-term project. Why don't you use your sway and we'll, not only will we fill in segments of the long-term project based on your role, we will also find out where you meet her and, and what happens. The great. Risky, uh, standard, and here we go. Uh, two. Not, it doesn't go very well. Not great. Um, and I think that you are, are dealing with like secretaries and intermediaries who, uh, who are saying that she's busy. She uh, has no time for you right now. Um, you, um, you do, however, have an address. You have an address of some offices that she works at in Charter Hall. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you how many segments you've cleared in just a second. But I want... So you have some... You have uh, direct contact with some assistants. And you have uh, an address in Charter Hall, and you you are probably understandably frustrated because last time you you became a little bit intimate with Una Faros. You That's right. 
broke down her defenses a little bit, and now she appear, appears to be giving you the cold shoulder. She's ghosting very... you, if you will. No, it's all ghosts with this lady. And um, she's, uh... Okay, so does that mean... You've only cleared one segment. Okay. Um, cool. So I tried, and I talked to secretaries. Uh, that's correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and no information at all other than that. Okay. Well, I'm giving you an opportunity in that way. You know. Right. Okay. I'm so I can continue this little. Great. So maybe if I can talk to those secretaries. Um, yes, I understand. But she. Uh, I understand she can't keep a, a very full social calendar, being as busy as she is. Uh, yes, that is correct. She's been asked that she uh, not be disturbed by... Disturbed, yes. I know. And, uh... Okay, I'll... I'll, This'll be my other... uh, This'll be my attempt to... Um... Acquire an asset here. If, uh, and tell me this is cheating by trying to fold things together. Well, unless you spend coin, you can't take another downtime activity. You, you I can, can because I'm a vampire. But, oh, uh, that's right. <laughs> yes. So you may take your third. Um, I, I still want to resolve how you hurt her wreck <clears throat> here. Um, great. Um, uh, so uh, that's great. So uh, um, must be terribly, terribly busy. Uh, Because she, uh, I mean, not too busy, of course. No, I assure you that she is very busy. Mr. Oh, uh, and I will give, uh, uh, Vines. (laughs) Vines. Mr. Vines, yes. I assure you, um. I will be sure to tell her that you called. Yes, um, be sure to tell her that Vimes called from the, uh, um, Harcourt Bucket of Blood, which is one of the, uh, um, Grand Guignol, uh, theaters that Ekaprag Rota used to work at. Um. Bucket of Blood, yes. Oh, yes. Miss Ferris is known to keep some very interesting company. <laughs> really? Oh, but... You can Please. see the uh, assistant repress a smirk for a second. I know, but you have to swear blind to me that, that, that you won't tell a soul. It is part of my job description to be discreet. Of course. I wouldn't you, want to... You feel like you've struck a very tiny blow here. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a two is a tiny blow. Yes. But I'm now hoping. let me know how you'd like to acquire that asset. Um, this is an office of hers? It is, in Charter Hall. If we're, if the goal is to destroy this thing, then I feel like it'd be great to know schematics, location, blueprints. And a office seems like the kind of place where that sort of thing might be. That is smart and uh, accurate. Um, Let's see if you can acquire it. And what's interesting to me is the way you're acquiring it this time feels like it's a little bit of its own little very tiny mini score, right? Yeah. You're going to get in here somehow or you're going to bribe this uh, person or something like that, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, it makes sense that if that's what's happening, then this is a... And this sounds like maybe a slip in and steal. Okay. Um, You're going to gain temporary use of these schematics. You're going to roll your tier... And the result indicates the quality of the asset. And, um, you know, you can always use coin to add additional tiers to the quality of this asset. Mm-hmm. So, okay. um, how did you... Uh, roll one die. Your tier is one. And let's okay. see how it goes. I'm just going to roll one of my uh, skills with one hip. Very good. And I roll oh. a six. A six. So, six means tier plus one. You got (laughs) tier two schematics of the facility. Not only, not only do you have the entire map of the place in Coleridge, 
you also have like how some of the stuff works, like the technical schematics for some of the equipment there, including the ghost jail and the new plasma guns. Oh, that's, that's bad. And you have one more thing. You have a series of articles that have been collected about corpses that have been found around the city missing body parts. Right. Mm-hmm. Fighting the abomination. Interesting. Um, Unaferos think- has been collecting this information for some reason. <clears throat> Um, somebody knows that there's an eldritch entity out there collecting material. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think this was like after that little interaction with that, um, secretary, Ekberg, like almost like stuck something under the bottom of a side windowsill and left so that when that was shut, it didn't close all the way. And then like when the workday was done, like that window just <laughs> slides up and Ekberg slithers in, um, and gets all this stuff. And um, so that is waiting for you in the grotto um, when, when we next meet. Excellent. Uh, very well done. And now I turn to Valkos. Mm. And I'm going to go heal. Um, Good idea. And we know who helps you do that. Yes. And I kind of, you know, um, I, I, I knock or you know, I look to... Uh, Juliet, I'm like... Um, I am so sorry. Oh, I know. No, I'm... It was foolish of me. I was caught in a... a rage. Uh, no, please, please, let me let me do this. And she just starts... unbuttoning your shirt herself. Uh, oh. Okay. Please, please, just let me help. Let me help. <clears throat> And uh, it's level two harm? Yeah. It is. Boy, It'll okay. move down to level one if you're successful. Yeah. And um, she starts applying a bomb and... Varkos... Do you remember what you told me many moons ago now? When I asked you what you wanted? Yes. A peaceful death. I'm sorry. I feel as though I am pulling you further and further from. No, no, no. I. And then in my in my head, the old man's like, "Just say it." And I'm like, "I am at peace with you." I don't want to be responsible for your death, Falcos. And you won't be. Everyone around me who follows me ends up hurt or dead or twisted in some way. And I kind of tenderly grab your face. I'm stronger than you think. I mean, you tried to burn me already. Look at where we are now. I suppose I'll have to test those limits then. <clears throat> I'm gonna roll my uh, healing yeah. roll. Go ahead. <laughs> and I, or you also get a plus one die, uh, die as well from my side because of the oh. vigorous. Uh, oh, it gives ability. plus one die as well. Yeah. Dope. So you're getting plus that two rocks. die. 
to this. Oh roll. my god, you're right. Permanently fill in one of your healing clock segments and take plus one die. Wow. wow. I think, yeah. yeah. That's powerful. That's, that is powerful. Okay. So, boom. There's a six in there. There's nice. a six, which means you heal three segments, which means that you have filled your clock, which means that Damn. Scorch goes down to level one. Cool. Could I Here. um? Could I get you to? I'll spend a gold for it to be spent again to get rid of Scorch. Because I've got Scorch you and Panic to, to level one. Right? Yeah, I'll do another roll. Yeah, would that? Wait, be... let me see. There might be a way to just increase the. Um, oh yeah, the critical. Well, I don't think a critical would fill it another whole three slots, though, would it? Uh, it would go five segments. So you're right. It would not. It would not. Um, spend one coin to improve the result to a critical. Yeah, that would just do five segments. So you would fill in the three, and then you'd have two left over. You're right. It's almost. It's almost better to get that extra action, and then roll it again. Okay. Okay. Cool. I will. And does uh, that, so does that, how does it work then? If Scorch has moved down to level one, I've now got two level ones. So now I need to get rid of the two level ones, right? Uh, that's right. That would be the best thing. Okay. Cool. So let's just do stick on stick on the Scorch. Yeah. Um, and she continues. That's one coin gone. Continues bandaging, and as she sort of presses the bandage, sort of close to the back. Um, she's behind you. She sort of very softly like kisses the top of the bandage. There's another oh, six. Another six. <laughs> another oh six. my god! All of your harm is gone. Amazing. Uh, of, of course. The harm right? on your body, yeah. but both, all of it, it's gone. Oh, amazing. Uh, the the harm of your body and the harm in your heart is gone. (laughs) And as soon as I feel that kiss, I turn around and I kiss Juliette Belrose. Oh my God. Okay. I think she's shocked, but yeah. (laughs) I I don't want to cut away, but I do want to cut away. I'm I'm conflicted now. Oh, I don't know how I feel. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Uh. Well, I was gonna use a coin for an extra downtime as well. Anyway, Go for but it. it's not to do kissing. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna use the full blown sex downtime activity. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Is that no, in the no, no, border no. stress gone? Yeah. What, what happens? You thought is... of everything. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet kisses him back, and then flustered, sort of pushes him off. Says we. This is too dangerous. Might kiss her again. And she's sort of like, no, no, she cannot see. The, she cannot see you. And she sort of just like pushes off and whatever door we have just very awkwardly like exits and closes the door. And I kind of <laughs> sit there and I'm like, I think he would be proud. Would he be proud? I don't know. Is that right? And if you see the other side of the door, really it's like against it, like, oh my God. Um, I need to get to work. And she's going to go straight to the workshop where she uh, spends, you know, that's where she sort of gets her clear mind thinking again. And I would like <clears throat> to attempt. Hey, how much coin do you have? For me? Yeah. One left, one. I think. Yeah, so you have one, one left. left? Because I gave one away to in the vaults, but I can hap wide. What are you thinking? I'm trying. I want to build a large bomb. Holy crap! Okay. They're difficult to build. They are tier five. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You could build a pretty large bomb, maybe not quite that large. Oh my god. It's in the book and it's under Sparkcraft, which is my forte. <clears throat> yeah, it's a large explosive. Um the most I could let me see. If I roll if I rolled a critical. You could manage it, right? Uh, it's two, three, four. I would need to spend one coin. To get it if you rolled a critical. 
if I rolled a critical. Does Valkos want to give you his final coin? Well, should I see how my roll goes? Yeah, can, can we do, do that? that? I could always take it out of the crew coin too. I, I love yeah. like you know th- this uh, this intimate connection is established, <laughs> the- and then you're like, oh, look, I gotta make a bomb. Oh, give me a coin. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta cool myself off here by uh, making a bomb. Well, I think it sort of reminds her that Ophelia is still around. The spark rights, that everything like I cannot get comfortable right now. Juliet right. cannot be comfortable. She has to deal with everything that is following her life right now. Um, yeah. Okay, so I need to do a tinker roll. Um, I'm using the workshop. I Great. get plus one to the quality to the result level that I roll here because mm-hmm. of artificer. Okay, all right. I'm just going to roll it and see what I get. Okay, there's a five in there, which becomes a six from my ability, Uh which gives me tier plus one. So it's two plus one because of the workshop. So that makes it tier three. So in order to get to tier five, I would need to spend two. Do you all have it? Well, we could take, you could take one from me and one from the vault. I mean, this would be then a very successful. I mean, do you know someone who earned coin on missions with you who does have coin on their sheet? Because he's currently Are you on telling the top. me does one of your other oh. <laughs> character sheets yeah, have coin? Yeah, there's someone you'd have to go and talk to. Ah, ah, I could visit Mr. Celia Khan to borrow <laughs> Good a, idea. To borrow some coin. And this will be our final scene, if you oh, wish man. to do this. Yeah, let's build it. Uh, all right, so the bomb no was... No one else had a downtime? If, well, if... Okay. Uh, I think we've used all of them, haven't we? Okay. Yep. I just want to make sure I'm not taken from... Okay. No, you're, you're not. So you... Uh, you uh, we have to convince Celiac to do this. Um, so, uh, let me know how you approach. And I know that Valkos has already spoken to Celiac. Yeah, and I've told about, you, like, I've told you know, him about how we what got we're doing and what we're going for. And information and on the hollow. We're actually, yeah. yeah, hopefully going to do a planned attack, depending if he joins us, but we'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, well, to the Builder's Church, I go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You arrive uh, at a very familiar tenement building now. You climb the rickety fire escape, the rusting fire escape. And when you arrive at the top, you see the citadel. Let's call it a full citadel. Actually, that might be too big. Encampment, lean to, you find the throne of Selyak Khan and the builder, uh, it's, uh, it's construction surrounds him Uh, as mentioned earlier there are acolytes there are followers who are looking meditating on uh, constructions that the builder has formed out of its corpus and the white sibyl stands in a position of honor with veins of black flowing through it and at its feet are various appendages Mm. and severed limbs and body parts (sighs) So uh, Celiac uh, sits there, perhaps upon uh, uh, his throne or in a comfortable seat, and Juliet approaches. Hello, uh, Celiac. It's uh, good to see you. Yes. Juliet Belrose. It has been too long. And yet I do not think that has been my choice. Yes. Um. Well, uh, Valkos tells me he's brought you up to date with our next endeavor, and that um, perhaps our interests might align once more on this. Yes, I trust that the spiritual gifts provided to him by our patron have uh, reached the worthy conclusion absolutely uh, they were invaluable 
I, uh, I, I thank you uh, on both of our behalf. However, there is um, something else I might ask of you. I need to construct something powerful, something that can destroy this uh, perverse prison that, that the spark rats are constructing. Something I know that you do not want to happen either. To construct, to destroy. There was a time, Juliet Belrose, when you were not so fluent in the language of paradox. But now it seems you understand that in order to build, a cycle of destruction must be set in motion. What is it you want from us? I require a coin. <gasps> is it as pedestrian as that? Well... I require you know, equipment, materials to, to build this, yes. I, yes, yes. It is as pedestrian as that. If it is material you need, then material you shall have. But the boons of my patron do not come without the price of service. And if we provide for you this coin, I only hope that you can provide the material for our great project. What kind? Uh, how, how much? Oh, Kranz uh, lean in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kranz is there. Okay, Kranz. yes. From behind, I feel like she's always in the shadow of the throne, you know, just sort of ever looming at all times. <laughs> and sort of leans in. You should make her give of herself, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The Kranz has been won over. Um, <laughs> yes, my sister. I believe you will find, Miss Belrose, that there is a happiness to be found in service. One of many paradoxes to which the Builder has opened my eye. And so, you will have the coin to build what it is you wish. If we may have in kind only one of your dexterous finger. I believe this is a fair trade, do you not? I... You Two hesitate. Coin. Two, Two coin. coin. And... Uh, you hesitate. Uh, my, my, my patron is not... Uh, Unamendable to compromise. No. Your tongue, perhaps. Take it. Oh my God. She puts her hand out, <clears throat> extends like her ring finger on her left hand. <clears throat> Just take it. Yes. And now uh, here, maybe perhaps a uh, celiac gestures to Kranz, who maybe slides a case over <laughs> that can be. Um, of course, yeah. Let's see, sort of surreptitiously, or sort of like puts it at, at Juniette's feet and gently. <clears throat> Juniette's just got her eyes closed though in this moment. She's just like frozen in fear, uh, apprehension, but just sort of has the hand out reached and um, awaits her fate. God damn, how did we get here? Um, yes. <clears throat> an offering for an offering. And now, as he leans in and you can see places on his skin where it has been pierced by other offerings of the Builder. <laughs> now, your service shall open doors to greater spiritual clarity. 
and the tendrils of the builder <laughs> begin to reach forward towards you. <laughs> Uh, and uh, they kind of uh, merge and twist together, and then they turn into what looks like uh, a meat cleaver, and it Fuck raises you. up over where Juliet's hand is rested, and it comes down. <laughs> and that's where we'll end for today. <laughs> oh, they're, they're freaks, y'all. They're freaks. Now oh. we know how much a finger is worth in the <laughs> Blades coin. in the Dark game system, a, a, a finger is worth two coin. Those of you who are learning the rules at home, make sure to remember that a finger is worth two coin. Wow, uh, what a completely bizarre Jesus. Grand Guignol ending, everybody. Congratulations. <laughs> two uh, coin. Look, the price of a bomb. It's yeah, right, I mean, look at what bet. you gained. Exactly. I mean, some would consider that a bargain. I mean, yes. is, what is it now? Tier five? It's a tier yes. five large, but it's like, shit. yeah, it's insane. It's like a nuke. It's a small <laughs> nuke. Um, so uh, that's the real price. The price of a small nuke is one finger. Um, that's our show. We're going to be back next week with our grand finale. The huge episode 25 where this crew finally goes after the Sparkwrights, Una Ferros, and their new facility. We can't wait to see you there. Until then, thank you, Abu Salim, Ross Bryant, and Josephine McAdam. We will see you guys very soon. 